The progressives were people who supported social or political movements that appealed to the interests of citizens through political reform. The progressives' main goal was to strengthen the national government by changing it to please the public. Sidney Micah's article titled Progressivism states, Insurgent Republican officeholders, disaffected Democrats, journalists, academics, social workers, and other activists who form new organizations and institutions with the common objective of strengthening the national government and making it more responsive to popular economic, social, and political demands. The progressives were dedicated to their cause. They strive to reach their goal even though it could have been considered government overreach. The progressive reform was fast growing, especially during the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution led to the rapid increase of factories, and because there were so many factories, it was difficult to find enough workers. Catherine A. Paul said in her article, National Child Labor Committee, Factory owners preferred hiring children because they were cheaper, less likely to strike, and more manageable than adults. Factory owners resorted to hiring children to do the work. Hiring children to work was helpful for employers, but was not ideal for some families. Some of the jobs being worked were dangerous and caused many workers to get injured. This included the children that were hired. Families didn't want to send their children into the workforce so young, but many of them were so poor they had no choice but to risk their children's health. Michael Schumann's article about the history of child labor during the Industrial Revolution discusses life for children after the Civil War. There was a time in this country when young children routinely worked legally. As industry grew in the period following the Civil War, children, often as young as 10 years old, but sometimes much younger, labored. They worked not only in industrial settings, but also in retail stores, on the streets, on farms, and in home-based industries. Young children were legally working in harsh conditions due to the Industrial Revolution. Schumann also said the 1870 census found that one out of every eight children was employed. This rate increased to more than one in five children by the 1900s. Between 1890 and 1910, no less than 18% of all children working was 10 to 15. Many children started working as the Industrial Revolution progressed. Progressives helped make it illegal for young children to work. The progressives were necessary and helpful reformers during the Industrial Revolution. They appealed to the needs and wants of citizens, resulting in a push to reform child labor laws. One of these progressives was Lewis Hine. Lewis Hine was an American photographer who used his photos to bring to light public injustice. As he studied as a sociologist, he later made the goal to bring to light social injustice. He started his pursuit by photographing the immigrants crowded in New York Ellis Island. Hine then continued with his objective by photographing child labor for the National Child Labor Committee. The progressives appealed to the public to push for government reforms. Progressives not only appealed to the people's needs and wants, but they also played to the citizens' emotions. One progressive, Lewis Hine, used his photographing talent to take pictures of child labor and expose the harsh reality to the public. The article, Lewis W. Hine, declares, Hine's photographs have helped draw public attention to the problem of child labor in the United States and ultimately assisted in ushering in federal regulations on workplace conditions. Hine played with the citizens' emotions to get their help in reforming child labor. The National Child Labor Committee was one of the leaders during the child labor reform. They faced defeat and slow progress, but they were resilient through it all. The most impactful publicist for the NCLC was Lewis Hine. Child Labor also states, Lewis W. Hine was its greatest publicist, a teacher who left his profession to work full-time as investigator for the committee. Hine prepared a number of the committee's reports and took some of the most powerful images in the history of documentary photography. Hine used his photos as a way to expose the horrors of child labor to the public. Hine stopped at nothing to ensure that the citizens knew about the horrendous treatment of children. The kinds of jobs you would find children working in ranged from the mines, the factories, the cotton mills, to working out on the streets selling newspapers. Injuries, even deaths, were very common among children. The parents would often say that they needed the income that their children brought in, that that was what allowed them to continue to survive. A number of parents were advocates for child labor and their children thought that that was the way life was. Hein dedicated his time to reforming child labor and it paid off. Hein often had to trick factory workers into letting him in, 
into their factories. He used many different disguises to obtain the pictures of child workers in the factories. More often than not, Hein had to resort to trickery to gain access from resistant, even hostile employers. He posed variously as a Bible salesman, industrial photographer, fire inspector, and insurance agent to get candid shots, sometimes with a hidden camera. Children might be removed from view before he arrived, or he might be barred from the premises altogether. When Hein couldn't find a way in, he waited outside the gates and photographed the children as they entered and exited. Hein stopped at nothing to bring to light the reality of child labor. Lewis Hein used pictures and articles to persuade Congress into making a change. Stephanie Kaycock declared, Though Hein was never famous in his time, his work was crucial in the fight against child labor in the United States. His photos helped to reveal the working conditions of children at the beginning of the 20th century, eventually leading to the child labor laws still in effect today. She brought forth good evidence as to why America needed to change its laws on child labor. Hine not only took photos, but he wrote articles explaining the hindrance of child labor. In his article, Child Labor in the Beet Fields of Colorado, Hine commented, They have done so, however, in such a sweet, uncomplaining spirit that the outside world has heard little about it, and even the office of the state knows but little as to the actual extent of the evil. No one apparently has taken the trouble to ascertain the facts in the matter. Hine is saying that few people know the extent of the reality of child labor. Hine then takes it upon himself to make reality known to the public. Without the public, Congress wouldn't have felt obligated to pass laws concerning child labor. The progressives appealed to the needs of the people, and they also affected people's emotions to help with the reformation of child labor laws. One progressive, Lewis Hine, used his talents to reveal the harsh realities of child labor to the public. Without the support of the public and the progressives' determined behavior, the, re the reforms made on child labor would never have happened. The progressives achieved astonishing things for the good of the citizens.